Hello, everybody. Uh, so as Dominique said, I still students. I will graduate next year. So uh, I know the engineering from the inside, and I see every day what is at school. So in my school, we are 20% of women in the school. And it's one of the most uh, crowded by women school in France. So uh, you see that it's not really important. Uh, with El Bouge, the association that I part of, so the English is girl on the move. We do some action with the girls to promote them the job of engineer or just technician because we all we have different people inside the association and they have different jobs. And so we decided 10 years ago to create this association and we gather uh, young girls from high school or middle school and then we do some uh, visits of uh, enterprise or company with them. So sometimes we take one or two class from a high school. So the one that are going to pass the A level, the baccalaureate, to present them uh, women engineers and to show them how we can conceal the personal life and the professional life because it can be done and it is possible as we saw today we have many scientists that have children and they do it really well. So it can be possible. And we invite them to big events like uh, Le Salon de l'Aéronautique or Le Salon de l'Automobile to present them uh, different parts of engineering and to present them how it works and what job we can do. And the fact that women have the place there. And sometimes with this uh, intervention, we have some girls that came to say to us that because of that, they don't have the lack of confidence that they had before. And now they are going to go in engineering because they that's what want to do. And uh, we discovered that the main problem for the girls is uh, the fact that the society said that they can't when they go to see the teacher or the director of the school and they say, I want to do this or that. And if it's related to science, most of the time we say to them that they can't because they are women. We say to them, oh, you want to be an engineer, but you are a girl, you can't. But that's not true. And this is the thing that we try to change. So, like to complement Marion's uh, presentation, uh, uh, the, the association. There are several associations uh, involved in promoting science for girls. Uh, El Bouge, so uh, Girls on the Move, in fact, was created at the initiative of big. Uh, industrial companies, which is completely different from uh, women and mathematics, and women and science. Uh, in these companies, they are sorry they don't have more women engineers, so they help at the creation of El Bouge, but maybe in India you also have companies that would like to have more women engineers. So the actions of uh, El Bouge are on a bigger scale and up to now, not so much in the schools. They are more like events and uh, uh, training uh, a woman engineer with a secondary school girl. So it is different from what is done by uh, women professionals like at women in science and women in mathematics. Anyway, uh, each country is so big that when we go to a place, we never hear, ah, El Bush came last week. And it's the same for you. So <laughs> we, we can all be there. We don't cover the country. Right. Julie, the demands are heavy. So we have one, two, three, and then. OK, we can pass by Rohini. And then Maggie. Okay. And then those two younger ones. I just, just wanted to share two or three things, which, as Sinsusha said, you know, we have been involved in things that have 
to some extent work, which are similar to what are being carried in France, but I thought I'll share them, is that uh, fr from the, on behalf of first the academy's uh, panel, uh, we started holding workshops, right. what we call career in science. True. Women in science, career in science. I think Maithili has uh, been spo has spoken, spoken Usha has spoken. And, no. and they are, so, so there actually we went to remote places Absolutely. and we gave, we had it in one and a half day session where the first thing was for the first entire day, we had people talking about cutting edge science. Six women in six different varieties and saying also people who are not in, who had done PhD but are in industry, for example. So that, that gives you a real idea of what education in science can take you to, can take a woman to. And then there is usually a discussion where we hope, but it doesn't always happen, that the male faculty at the colleges, this is strictly at the college level, male faculty and the male students should also join in a panel discussion where you try to bring the idea that there are women who do cutting edge science. So one of the dangers, at least I have found in India, and I want to share that uh, that we have had, is that there is always this attitude, which of course that there is a reason, there is a market for that also, that we need to use women for development. You know, women's science is only for developmental purposes in rural area, for health areas, where it is more a duty, you know, whereas what we are, we have to convey, and that is part of the thing when we convey, as you said, geek, okay, the top class, blue chip research, which is nothing to do with society, nothing to do with, but it is research and it is something that women can do. That is something, unfortunately, still not accessible. And this has to come and these kind of workshops did do that to some extent. And secondly, I want to compliment with your Vigyan Jyoti program. As somebody who had been asked it since, since last May when you started it, I have spoken at about eight of these Vigyan Jyoti programs in rural areas. And it's a wonder to see the enthusiasm in the eyes of the young girls. They don't understand the science you are telling them as much. They cannot. But they understand the enthusiasm. So, I, I, uh, so that is something I would, I would really compliment. And last but not the least, workshops for young women who are in science, who hear about practitioners, from the practitioners, that you don't need to give up. Their things are possible. I have had women coming to me after conducting such a workshop. These are women who are postdocs saying that I was this close to giving up because I had problems with my mother-in-law, by the way, not just parents, parents-in-law also. I had problems with my mother-in-law. I had problems with my children. I was going to give up. And then I heard Jocelyn Bell. And I said, yes, we all can do it. So these are thank, the three thank things. Thank you, Rohini. Thank you. So there are there are many things that can be done uh, at the academy level, at the level of government. Uh, now let's hear from Mati. <clears throat> it just I want to share with you an experience I had a few years ago, and uh, what I thought about this experience. I received a class of teenagers, about uh, 13, 14 years old, and I had uh, two major remarks. The first one was, "Oh, there are women in science." and even old women. <laughs> <laughs> and the second one, because I, was, I am working in CA, then it's a very closed uh, campus. Mm. And uh, another one asked me, but are you allowed to escape from the campus once a month? <laughs> <laughs> then I asked them, but why are you thinking that? And they said, because I am looking at movies. Yes. OK. So and my, 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 my really thinking, um, I think that it's very good to go in school to explain, right. but we have to follow the way they are communicating. That's why we have to Twitter. use their way of communication. We have to, that's what I meant. We have to you know, internet, yes. we have to go inside. And we, we have to, to make need, some movies, I don't know, yeah, with old women. We need the friends in media to tell us how to do this. Because it is about telling them we are not the one, you know, the frizzy haired and torn lab coat and no clothes and mad scientist. We are normal people, we have normal lives and we normal, have a career. Normal, normal, normal. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, as normal as possible. So we have a couple questions from the back. We come to Catherine in a bit. Yeah. Archana, is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
we'll come we'll come back this way yeah uh, i'm anita and i was just thinking when you're looking at the question of attracting uh, women scientists to the science career for india given the number of women that we have at the college level i think our problem is attracting women scientists after their phd i think we need to focus on that not to underplay that we need to keep the pipeline going that is one of the issues two i think in terms of looking at interventions in terms of talks they are very useful as a starting point but i think as a long term strategy and as a national strategy what is very important is to link research institutes two schools close by and i have a have a much more sustained interaction for the students to get a peek into what a science a career in science means and how exciting it can be i think access to young children that i do in the uh, in the identification and mentoring of gifted children a peek into the research labs into premier institutes even for a short I've while done, i mean i have i had nine graders extended. i've yeah. had nine graders who walked in yes and uh, never said no however yeah. difficult it is i tell my phd student doesn't matter and it's often turned out that we underestimate what yes. they can understand and what they can do exactly. i've had a surgeon come with his son uh from another state and saying that you know i believe that you take open internships and i'm a surgeon uh my son wants to do science and here is this kid who spent two months in my lab just yeah. pottering around and shadowing phd students and went back and he's decided that you know he doesn't want to be a surgeon or a doctor or yeah. whatever he wants to do pure science yeah. so i think it is yeah. these experiences and yeah and I one last line to say that in terms of what gets perceived as a role of a women scientist as a job that's extremely difficult the fun side of right. women scientists is hardly shown to the that's, young children and i think it's extremely important right. that that is made more visible to children to right. show that so your life is not just i'm saying hours. that you know you, you need public places where it doesn't mean it doesn't matter if it's a mall you know you just put up a pop up show or something like that because we have to learn to communicate the way it catches their imagination um so we have a couple questions and then catherine hello so, yeah so uh, yeah i think this discussion is getting very very interesting and i more or less agree with all of you and all that has been discussed here uh, i just want to pinpoint that this vigyan jyoti program is is really good program and i was part of this when uh, we did it in iit bombay recently and uh, i i agree with rohini i mean the 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 faces of all these students who came from remote places i mean the excitement which they had the kind of questions which they had, uh, they asked i mean i in fact if there there would have been after the program i was essentially wondering that out of the, these uh, some 40 students if i can mentor some five of them uh, i think it will be really good because what happens is many times they see the role models so there are uh, few of us i was from physics then there was a biologist chemist and so they i mean they see the work of all these people and they they see the role model but the question is question which they have it whether they can do it okay and if we provide that opportunity to them even at the small level that actually can build and boost their confidence which will take them long way and we do this early enough is is would be the best that will basically give them confidence to fight all those right. things which you need they need to fight right. later in their career thanks thanks archana and i think in little ways other universities have been doing it for instance at manipal which is a very good private engineering and medical college they've been running this program and they bring in children from all over the state for a two week residential program and these are children who are studying in regular government schools with the most fundamental teaching which is done very very basic equipment perhaps just chalk and board and that's it and they bring them in for a residential stay on their university and they invite people to come and teach with them and i have seen the same light in those kids eyes i mean they are asking me questions which an entry level phd student can ask so they are thinking if you show them then they will do it so it's great that the government has put these in and we would like to see whether there is participation possible from the french either through the french academies 
um, because either it can be dovetailed into an inter-academy program because then they will know that these are measures which go beyond any country's borders. Mm -hmm. the, this has not got to do with science in India alone. This is a global phenomenon. So I think that is another way by which we can enthuse them that science is not local. There's, there's a global. Video, that's, video a one. that's a great mm -hmm. one. That's a great one. That's we can we can open a video we can open a video channel for that thing. Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's not question. I mean, I just, uh, okay, I'm Sharmishta Bhattacharya from uh, Variable Energy Cyclotron Center, basically Department of Atomic Energy. So I would like to point out that uh, Department of Atomic Energy also has put uh, this in a strong way, the outreach program. So this has been, uh, I was uh, involved in that for last uh, five to seven years, and I have seen this has become very, very effective because uh, sometimes we go to schools for interacting with the students, not in a formal level, but very much informal level. And another thing is that uh, the school's uh, students, they come to our institute, and uh, the, the excitement they have when they see the technologies, cyclotrons, and many other things. And practically, we have seen, when we visited the schools, after five years, when they appear in some interview for, uh, I mean, entering into PhD, they say, oh, ma'am, you remember that we, are, we have come to see the cyclotron? And I, that day only I decided. I mean, it has happened, actually, recently in last year. So we were so happy that uh, that day he decided uh, that uh, to come uh, as a scientist uh, to enter into this profession. And another point I'd like to uh, point out that uh, for these kind of outreach programs, in the schools, of course, the women, I mean, more girl child in the science career, we have to remember. But at that level, I think we have to do it in a more gender neutral way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that is uh, very important. And uh, as such, in Department of Atomic Energy, we see that, uh, okay, I, I personally feel that still there is some, some problem in the very high level, I mean, women positions. But, uh, for example, in our institute, there are many, many, I mean, more <laughs> for at present, more women physicists compared to the other counterpart. And um, in the LIA program of uh, Indo-French collaboration program, with, that is not Sefipra, but the, the part, at present, uh, the, both the spokesperson and co-spokesperson are women. One is Vandana Nanal from TIFR and from BRC Aradhana. And uh, in SEFIPRA program also, we have two, three programs led by the women scientists. Yeah. Okay, I think it's time to, yeah, it's time to be a, a bit politically incorrect. So I have two uh, comments in this way. The first one is that everybody is talking on the role of the, of the parents and the teachers to try to, uh, stimulate women to go to science. But there is another element called boyfriends. And sometimes, and we cannot ignore that. Sometimes the boyfriends or the husband are quite jealous and try to convince the girlfriend or woman to stop study or to stop taking a scientific career. So I don't know what we can do, but as a group leader, I was confronted twice to the situation. It's quite uncomfortable to discuss uh, with our colleague in, the, in this way, and we try to think on that. The second point I'd like to mention in mathematics, also I'm from life sciences, uh, until, in contrast to, uh, to Ecole Polytechnique, until uh, 1985, if I remember well, at the Ecole Normale Supérieure, uh, there were two schools, one for male and one for female, which means that at least in mathematics, but it's true also in physics or in life sciences, there was a certain number of places reserved for women. And I'm not sure they were less successful than the male afterwards. I mean, uh, decades after that, there was a very famous uh, female mathematician. So although I'm not in favor to separate again the, the, the male and the female in school, I think we have to think on that. Let, let me comment on this outreach. 
um, issue. Um, I completely agree that it's really important for everybody to to have lab visits, to go and make experiments, to attract people, and to do outreach. For all of you who've done that, like me, you know that you will pass your weekends on that, your Saturdays, your Sundays. It's always the women. Well, there's a lot of women, and you're overexposed to that, which is a good thing because you serve as a role model, and for sure. But it's very... Um, it's it's very time consuming also okay and it goes back to the woman so let me come on that from the institutional side we we said this morning it's it's up to the institutions to do things yes but it's always grassroots initiatives you go um to make an experiment you go to make an outreach thing and even if we if if all of us we do that it will be singularities it's just point per point that not a continuous plan we reach only a fraction of girls and boys okay but I think that institutions do have a role in that by having to uh, con to consider that in the career of somebody, be it a woman or a man, that the amount of work you do in order to do outreach events um, for girls or for boys or for both of them, I think the institution has to take into account that and must much more valorize these activities and consider them as something like, I mean, is it more important to do 10 outreach things or to write two publications? What is the value of doing that? And we sh I think we should have a reflection of how can the institution evaluate that in a very positive, constructive way. I'd like and we to. We need the men and women. I mean, we cannot be proselytizers of science if we, if we imagine all the women are going to do it and all the men are going are not going to do it. It yeah. it just has to be both. Yeah, that in yeah, our my, yeah, this is very the very good point because the institution can step in and give some incentive. Absolutely. Where I was when I was visiting Virginia Tech, I understood that they have a quantum of uh, some uh, money or off from the teaching if they. They do extra mentoring in schools. Some such thing the institute can think of. This is great. So, so in, uh, for example, in my in institute, they run a condition of this activity when you are supposed to be promoted. Right. Sorry. Say in, so in India, example, I would like to. I wanted also just to add one word about the, the remark of Catherine about the role of uh, men. Mm -hmm. And I think that the question of equality is a problem of men and women. And uh, I think it's, it will be, I think we, we will really progress when all the men and the women will consider this, uh, this question. And for, example, for instance, at the French Physical Society, uh, when we decide that in conferences you need to have a number of uh, invited speakers, women, who is equal to the proportion of women in these disciplines, often the organizers of the conference calls me and say, oh, do you have the name of women who can speak? And I say, no, I am not a specialist of your domain. You have to look at the women in your domain, and it's your job. And I think it's important to, to, to make men uh, in, in the game, and uh, so at all the levels, for small boys, boyfriends, husbands. They have to do the homework. We have a young budding scientist right there. Let's hear from her. Hello, everybody. So uh, I think she's a PhD. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So it was great listening to you all uh, talking about uh, not breaking careers and continuing postdocs and having um, permanent position, how to sustain them, and things like that. But I feel even after, I mean, getting into PhD itself is and sustaining the. So, uh, social stigma towards it itself is a challenging task. It's it's uh, to to say the least, it's traumatizing, because uh, nobody. I mean, you can. You, I have qualified the exams. I've got into institutions, but nobody around me does respect or does know what is the value of it. So, how do we sensitize the 
the common people even family or friends and things like that to actually value people who are doing phd so if when you don't have that uh, uh, at that age at that young age that you don't see people respecting or valuing it 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 is a it is something inside it might not rot in you completely but that thing would be still uh, it's like a gangrene it will be staying and you will never know where, when it will explode so i think um, we need a lot of social scientist input here uh, uh, and because i feel that uh, as maithili ma'am <laughs> rightly conveyed that there is a lot of lack of confidence in young girls uh, that is because i think the chiding right from a lower age is so much strict towards girls than towards boys boys are uh, allowed or in fact tolerated uh, to take risks or to fail but it's not the same for girls i think uh, like like uh, how they put up in the movies uh, breaks like uh, tobacco is banned <laughs> or eating tobacco is banned you have to come up with some short film uh, <laughs> where you can put it during the movies that you have to treat both uh, ma- girls and boys equally and and the, and how it is impacting uh, girls career choices or the ability to just speak up or take risks or even to propose a challenging question uh, is uh, difficult for them i think uh, this has to be answered uh, in a global way so it's very important that uh, the self esteem of the person who chooses science as a career is you hold your head high i mean you make the choice and it's the system the society and the institutions which have to support and you know after that everything based on merit and valorizing your contribution to your job all of that are institutional thing but we really have to build the esteem of uh science as a career and that is why i i said even the counselors who are sitting in schools they have no idea of what a science career is so we need them to start tell, you know because they spend a lot of time in the school telling them you know you can go into this you can go into that and the child's mind is buzzing about some math problem or whatever but instead they're telling me you're saying that oh you know you can't even make a living in math okay so they'll tell them you want to do zoology or botany what on earth is that i mean you're not going to get any money now look at gitanjali it, i just discovered we went to the same college <laughs> yes <laughs> but a few decades before you but anyway but the point is that we need to convey to public at large that doing science as a career and contributing to the knowledge of humanity is going to benefit humanity today tomorrow or one century later we don't know every knowledge is applicable we just don't know the time scale at which it's going to become applicable so thank you very much for bringing out that point that we need to build the self esteem of a science career person you know and it's very very important that that's been done for both the men and the women who are in science thank you um yeah uh, thank you i just you. wanted to make a so comment. now we will be closing in 2 minutes just anybody has comment. a very pressing yes we'll tanushree and then uh, we'll a small finish. comment uh, is that when these outreach programs are done does it also include the parents family members because very often yeah. if we can even motivate the young kids mm-hmm. is the family pressure right so so far none of those that i've gone to um i've gone to in at least the southern states all of them um it's always been the kids and they've gone back i've, I've done it in pune i've done it in mangalore i've done it in uh, cochin in many places i have not seen the parents around okay okay very good so it's it's a great idea it's a great idea right 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 so we would we would like to learn from uh from the example of el bush uh and we can now go to the indian industries i cannot see why the indian industries are not doing such a thing there is you know no 
No, no, no. They're putting up this, putting up this outreach and advocacy, because there is a huge dearth of women in every industry. It's the same thing. So we need to make sure that this sort of internal elbow type of thing goes on within the Indian pharma industry, the so, yeah, manufacturing industry. Indian industry is doing better than our Indian scientific establishment. Oh, good. Very good. Ah. We well, will it's close with well, that. With, uh, okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. I'm a mathematician. We already spoke quite a lot of, about what we're doing in France for women for girls in mathematics and in science. I just want to mention, you have that in your little booklet. Uh, this is a study, Gender Gap in Science, which is put up by International Science Council, and it's addressed to women and men in science and to try, and there's a, a survey that you should fill up. It's worldwide, and it's to find better ways to I mean, to try with the survey a better world for everyone in science. So you have to fill up in each country. This is a worldwide survey. And at the end is the end of October. So it's very soon if you hadn't done it. And you have to spread it, too. Thank you very much.